Praise the Lord. Just going to let it loose on y'all, okay? We're in the book of Acts. And let me say this. I was thinking about it this afternoon. So if you hear something that you don't like from the word and you get offended, take it up with God. I'm just reading what he's telling me to do so you can't possibly say I'm talking about you across the pulpit, okay? <laughs> We all are convicted sometimes, and conviction must cause us to repent, yes, and get ourselves right with him, correct? Okay. And let me just say this, because I ask a lot of questions sometimes of, of my father, and sometimes I just don't. Whether he answers me or not, I'm going to go ahead and do what I'm told to do anyway. So that's pretty much settled. So we don't argue about anything. I try not to reason with him because he's smarter than I am and he's wise. So just a prelude to getting into this word. We've, we've seen a lot of things. We've heard a lot of things as we've been reading out of this book. And this is the established Messianic community that the Father intended of those that were of the Jewish community becoming messianic, because that's the term we use today, and those who were called out and grafted in. This is how he started it. This is what he intended. And again, remember the wise counsel of Gamaliel. If this is not of God, it'll die, like all the past movements have. And this has not died. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh my goodness. Stephen had been stoned to death, right? We talked about that last week. And what was his cry as he was dying? To hold it not against them. Amazing. I keep reminding you guys, and I keep saying over and over again, and I'm repetitive because the scripture is repetitive. We will go through trials and tribulations. Yes, we will. We will go through trials and tribulations. Hard times will come. And I'm just warning you because I know it in my spirit. Judgment is already approaching for the church in this nation, or what it's called the church. And it doesn't matter your denomination or affiliation. You're all a part of the body. And if you're the remnant and the called out of the Father, you're going to be humbling yourself before him. You should be praying now because when it comes, it's a little late to kind of cry out and to call out now. And one of the things about being here in this nation, because we're not experiencing some of the things that they are in other nations, the persecutions that they're people being put in jail for speaking the word. They have to hide for fear of their life. We don't have to do that. What is going on in Israel now? All of it must come to pass. And all of the countries that are coming against Israel are not finished coming against Israel either. There'll be more that are joined the fray. Yes, they will. Watch, see what I'm saying? Hear what the Spirit is saying, okay? So what is our job we're to be praying, right, for the peace and for the hand of God to move. That when he does move, that those that don't know him will know him. Because they're reading from a manuscript in which this word comes from. So they know he's to come. They know what is to come because a lot of the word is prophetic, at least that part that hasn't come to pass yet. But if it is written down, it shall come to pass. It is proven that, right? What he said will come to pass, will come to pass. We've been reading it in Acts. So I'm asking every believer that calls on the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus, get your head out of the sand and be about your father's work. Pray for a spirit of boldness to be able to speak the truth wherever you are. I'm going to explain that as we read this chapter real quick, and you'll see what is being implied here, what the Holy Spirit is doing. Okay, so let's, let's start reading Acts chapter 8. The Father, give us ears to hear your word. 
Now Saul was consenting at his death, at Stephen's death. And at that time, a great persecution arose against <clears throat> the called out ones, against the ecclesia, which was at Jerus Jerusalem. Where did it start? Jerusalem. Glory to God. Where is it ending? Jerusalem. Not here, not somewhere else. It'll be in Israel. Hello? Okay. Can't rewrite history because you want to. Doesn't work that way. And they were all scattered throughout all the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the emissaries, the apostles. And the devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. They wept for him. And as, Saul, as asked for Saul or Paul, he made havoc of the call out ones of the church, entering into every house, dragging off men and women and committing them to prison. This is happening today in other nations. It will happen in this nation as well. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached <laughs> Messiah to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon. This is not Peter who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And they heeded him, they listened to him, because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, and he was, and as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of Jehovah and the name of Yeshua the Messiah, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. When he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem, they had heard <clears throat> that Samaria had received the word of Jehovah, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, who prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen on none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Yeshua, or John's baptism, a baptism of repentance. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands that the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power that anyone who lay lay, I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money? You have, you have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of the Father. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God, pray Jehovah, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and by wound, by, are bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. I'm going to stop there for a moment. As they were obedient, the church was, the believers were increasing, were they not? We read it in the scripture. As they were obedient, 
And the scripture says, as they went their way, so they stopped in every town, every village. They talked to everyone along the way, the gospel. So what is the requirement of every believer to do? You must share what? The word. You must share the truth. You must not be afraid to speak the truth. When I worked for the government, <clears throat> there was a, I told y'all, there was a rule and regulations about not speaking. They came out with that a few years ago. Any religious thing, you know, out in public. So I'm like, oh, okay. But they can't stop me from using plain English and from, you know, glorifying him. When, are you following what I'm, what I'm saying? You could have rules and regulations, but that doesn't quench your light or keep your light from shining. I can say bless you in another way, but I'm still saying bless you. And we're talking in, in conversation, and I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you. <laughs> I, 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 one of the times I got called into the office, <laughs> and, and I got to pray for the dude that was in charge. Because he called me in, uh, give me a hard time about something. Y'all understand, I understand that when I get a hard time, that I'm being what I'm called to be. I'm doing what I'm called to do, not because I'm doing anything wrong. I can promise you that I've never gone and got called in the office in there for doing something wrong for breaking any rules or regulations. It was always because the light of his glory messes with the darkness because darkness and light can't occupy the same place. So when you're somewhere being salt and light, you're stirring things up and people just operating in a different spirit want to shut you down. Yeah. So I'm coming in the office being accused of something he didn't, it, and it was like three of us in there, and I'm in there, and we're having a conversation, and I'm sitting there smiling. I said, can we have the room for a minute? And so everybody left but me and the third guy in charge. I said, man, let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in here. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you stand. I said, but I'm going to tell you this. What I do is I pray for all of y'all because the Bible tells me to even pray for leadership and for those who would persecute you and those who would come against you. I said, so, you know, whatever you decide to do, you decide to do it, but make sure you're doing the right thing because whether you believe like I believe or not, every man <laughs> reaps what he sows. So I'm just letting you know I pray for you, man. He goes, and he just relaxed and he said, man, I, and he just starts, I ain't going to tell you what he said. He starts confessing some things, and then I end up praying for this guy. Okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> but you must be ready at all times for the Father to use you. And many times that's in the pot with the pressures around. You can't let your flesh come out. You must let him come out. And there's always a response to that. Listen, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not telling you, I'm not asking you to do something I wouldn't do myself. And even we had a, a, a late, a second, a lady in charge, she was second. And yeah, nobody could stand her because of the rules and the regulations she came out with. Da, 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 da. And I mean, she was just wreaking havoc, man. And, uh, and people will see her and go, you know, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So one day I'm working, <laughs> she comes in with her sidekick, big tall dude, and, and, I, and I saw her and I shook her hand. I won't say the name, but I, I said, well, I said, I just want you to know something. And she said, what's that? I said, you know, I'm not crazy about all your policies and how you run your business and what you do. I said, but I do, you know, by the leading of the Lord, pray for you constantly. I just want you to know that. And she looked at me and 
And she grabbed me and hugged me. I'm like, oh, no, not in front of people. Not everybody's going to see. Anyway, that's what I thought in my mind. I'm like, okay, praise the Lord. She said, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> But the rep, her reputation and everything that everybody's in the things that she did, no way in the world that this woman would be even receptive to anything that I said. Are you, are you hearing me? So now, let me get back to the scripture here. Here we have Simon, who was a sorcerer, who was using magic and sorcery to bewitch the people. They saw signs that he did. They heard what he said. Now, the scripture says that he was put, building himself up, right? Saying that he was somebody great. He was telling them and they were buying it because of what they saw. Now, scripture talks and prophesies about the last days that there would be many signs. That if the days were not short, that the very elect would be what? Deceived. Also, scripture says that many will come before him and say, Lord, Lord, did I not cast out devils in your name? Did I not heal the sick in your name? He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I knew you not. So there will be signs of wonders happening. You will see them, but don't get hooked on the signs and wonders. You need to keep your focus on him and praying for discernment. Because if I'm going to deceive you, I must tell you truth along with my lie. You will not believe a right out lie, but you will believe a lie wrapped in truth and seeing a wonder. He was wanting what the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted, Simon, the adulation and the praise of men. And that's what he was getting, was he not? He was. Scripture says he was. And that's what they were getting, were they not? The rabbi come by, it still happens. They just, you know, give them space. Ooh, you have one king and master in whom you bow before. And we've always known in our history, there's always been kings and queens and what did they require of men? Or they had to kneel before them as if they were greater. They thought of themselves more highly than they ought to have. Yeah. But the Savior and the King in which we serve knelt and humbled himself and bowed that we would be lifted up in the eyes of the Father. Remember that. He was humble to the very end. So Simon believed as well, according to the Scripture, and he was baptized. Then he saw the laying on of hands as, as the apostles came and that were sent. He saw the laying on of hands. He saw them receive the Holy Spirit. He wanted to be able to do the same thing. And so then he did the same. He wanted to do the same thing. And so he's like, man, and he followed Philip around for a while. I'm just paraphrasing what we've just read. Then it gets to the point where he says, man, I want to do this. Yeah. I'm a, I'll give you guys a little, break you off a little change. Because you know he was a rich dude. I mean, come on, look at the psychics now. I mean, they got lots of money. People just praying, just paying for, you know, some kind of revelations for somebody to give you because talking to somebody dead or something like, you know, they just paying. You, they're paying out the yin-yang for this thing. So he, he, he was making money. He had a whole township. So he's making money. So he's going to pay for the gift. And of course, as we read, they went off on him. Here's the thing. And remember this. When you pray with someone and the Father uses you as the Holy Spirit draws and, and he gives the increase and somebody gives their life over to the Messiah, there needs to be discipleship. He, had, he was walking along and he was watching, but he wasn't being discipled. His own nature was still in him because he hadn't changed yet. He had not yet repented. Right? He believed. He got baptized, but he kept the same mindset. Me, 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 me. Me, me, me don't make it into the kingdom. Him, 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 him makes it into the kingdom. Hello? Okay. I'm just saying... Y'all get mad at me if you want to. Me, me, me doesn't enter into the kingdom. 
just because you said a prayer and you go to church three times a week, don't mean you're saved. Somebody that is saved and delivered, there's a character change that has taken place. You begin to look more like the Messiah. You begin to sound more like the Messiah. He's the one that set the example. Even the Paul, and who we'll see later, as he began to write, his, write the scriptures, write his epistles, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, if I'm not following him, then don't follow me. I am not responsible for the salvation of anybody at the sound of my voice. You're responsible. I can't save anybody, haven't saved anybody. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But my job is to present a living Savior because I'm alive and he lives in me. And I have to speak by the Holy Spirit. When Peter told him, I see that you have bitterness in you. you th how could he know that? Except by the Holy Spirit. Hello? And again, I'm speaking from experience. You can talk to people to be in regular conversation and the Holy Spirit speaks to you to say something that's not even a part of the conversation and you say it and you watch the door open. Blows my mind every time. <laughs> but I've learned to be obedient when it comes. Because what I don't want to do is to miss an opportunity where he places me to do what I've been called to do and born again to do. Are you with me? Are you with him? And it does not matter where I am. If the opportunity is there, I'm there. You got to understand there's a lot of people that come in and sit in chairs and sit in the pews that are carrying luggage and baggage from things that happened years before. They're still carrying it, still beating them up, still keeping them in bondage. And they're standing there going, hallelujah, but still in bondage. Whom God sets free is free indeed. Yes? All right. I can't blame them. I can't say it's their fault. That's why I'm talking to you the way I talk to you, and I'm telling you to read this for yourself. Because when I begin to read it for myself and to read it out loud, Boom, my mind was blown because it's almost like when I read it and, and I was reading it out loud and I heard something that it was like, click, 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 click. What, what, what? And then I would read it again and I would read it again. I'm like, still says the same thing. And I would go, but that's not what I was taught. I guess I'm the only one. All right. Well, so <laughs> at, least, at least that's how he dealing with, deals with me. Okay. I just act this. Is what got me. This is what got my attention. And I had an example in my life, a great grandmother who was just awesome. I really loved the Lord. Wow. Great grandma, man. She was awesome. And then people in my life, I can I can name a boatload of them that just, just were believers and I could see their heart and I don't even know why they got me sitting at their table and why, why they're feeding, you know, the state I was in. Why <laughs> am I here? Why, you know, why y'all even, you know, why? <laughs> it doesn't make, didn't make any sense. But now looking back and now knowing what I know, it makes sense. All right. You heard enough about Simon? So there are people out there today that are still using sorcery, still using magic, still using deceit to draw in the people of God and to get them from keeping their eyes. I'll use what Peter 
Lord used to say, keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. He keeps your perfect peace whose eyes have stayed on him. So, and there are people out there still selling for money. Come on, y'all know it, man. It's prosperity. God going to bless you and everything going to be all right. Well, everything going to be all right without the, without the monetary blessing. I'm just saying that if you think the monetary blessing is a indication of you being blessed and highly favored by the Lord, sometimes it is. But today, a lot of times, it's not. Because once I've seen people get... Get money, get paid for something. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. And their whole drive is to get paid. And everything that is being taught is so that everything, that the ministry will grow so I can pad my pockets just a little bit more. Hell will be waiting. And you will stand one day before your Savior if you don't repent now and say, Lord, did I not? And he will stop you there and show you what he saw. Because it's all about the intent of one's heart, isn't it? If you're doing to get something, that's the wrong intention. Just saying. Every time you help somebody, can I owe you something? Can I, can I? No, it's okay. Praise the Lord. Glad I could be a blessing to you. Just say. You want me to get crazy on y'all? Well, just come on and just bless the man of God and I'm going to. Put a basket down here, and it's going to be the $10 line, and it's going to be the $20 line. And I think some of y'all can do $100 and put it over here. And if you bless the man of God, then God will bless you. Really hadn't found that. I've been looking for it, but it's not in there. And I mean, I've searched diligently, but I just haven't seen it. So I'm going to keep talking about the church and how he designed it. Now, here's something awesome. Verse 26. Now, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go <laughs> toward the south along the road which goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Where did he come to worship? Jerusalem. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, and he <clears throat> was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Who said to Philip? The Holy Spirit said to Philip, the Holy Spirit has a voice. He said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. And Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come and to sit with him in the place in the scripture which he was he read was this, and that's out of Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, and he opened not his mouth, and in his humiliation his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Yeshua to him. 
Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? And then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yeshua, the Messiah, is the Son of God. And he commanded the, the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Asotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now, I'm going to read something to you out of uh, Psalm 68, 31. The noble shall come from Egypt, cush and hasten to stretch out her hands to God. O kingdoms of the earth, sing unto God, sing praises unto the Lord. In some verses it says those from Egypt and from Ethiopia will come and stretch out their hands to God. This eunuch represented a nation. How was he touched? Because Solomon was king, remember? <laughs> Solomon had relations with the nation and Bathsheba, I'm saying to you this, <clears throat> and let me say this very clearly, the God of this world has done many things in which to divide the body and to keep them weak and from working together. Many, many things turned our eyes towards ourselves, made us think more highly than we ought to think not willing to work together because of this and this and this. And I've said to you, and I will say to you again, that if Yeshua is not the head, then what are you doing? And I say to you again, be Messiah-minded, be Christ-minded, and not be like-minded, because you can be like-minded and be totally wrong. Hallelujah. The truth is the truth. The word is the truth. And we stick by the truth. We speak the truth. And you speak it out loud because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's true. It works. Because when you speak out loud, you will not speak out loud things you don't believe. Too many times I've listened to people and I've asked them to repeat something after me according to the word. And they cannot repeat it because they don't believe it. You don't believe it can be true because of what has always happened to them in the past. You must speak it out loud because that's how you renew your mind because this thing is like a computer, so it needs to be reprogrammed. Yes? So it needs to hear. That's the way in. And then it needs to see. So sometimes you start to stop looking at things and watching certain things and start hearing. Because I'm telling you again from experience that your environment will influence you or you will influence your environment. And if your environment is influencing you in a negative way, it's time to walk away. It's time for you to get some space between you and that place. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm like that in relationships too. If people are starting to rub off on me in a negative way and I start to be exhibiting something other than him, then I'm backing up from that relationship. And I don't care who it is. Because my first priority is to my father. And the price has already been paid for me through his son. Why am I going to ask him to pay more? Because of my foolishness. Because I want to do what I want to do. I want to be like everybody else. I want No. I want to be like him. If you look like him, we can walk together. How can two walk together except they agree? So we got to be in agreement. Can we agree that Yeshua is Lord? Can we agree that he's the Lord of Lords? Can we agree that his work is finished? Can we agree that we're supposed to be conformed to his image? Can we agree we're supposed to be speaking the truth and love everywhere we are? Then what's the problem? 
That's right, Brendan. He's not the problem. We are the problem. Hear what the word of God has said and what he's inspired in men to write so for our learning. And if you ignore it and you continue to ignore it, we'll keep going down the path in which we have been going, where we have a body where half of them are anemic <laughs> and not even yielding any fruit at all. Let me ask you here in the United States of America in which we live, and I was a soldier in the United States Army. Now I'm a soldier in the Army of God, so I do understand discipline. And when I served in the military, I learned the rules and the regulations so I knew what they could do and what they could not do. And it was always important to do that because there was always somebody of a questionable character and just wouldn't like you just because of who you are, how you looked, how you sounded, all the foolishness. So I learned the rules and the regulations. So when I got out of the army and I got my calling, then he took me back to the regulation book. Then I began to read in this book and understanding what could the enemy could do and could not do to me. You know what the enemy could do to me? You know, what I allowed him to do. That's exactly right. You know what he can't do? He can't stop me from doing what the Father wants me to do as long as my heart and my mind, my heart and mind being the same thing in the Scripture, is on him. Will he try? Yes. I'm not afraid of somebody that's got demons in them. I've been in front of people with demons many times. That's not frightening to me. I'm not worried about them jumping on me because I belong to, and I have, again, diplomatic immunity. Where I am, he is also because he's in me. He's tabernacled in me. Hallelujah. I'm saying. So I'm not going anywhere that he's not there, even if it's full of darkness. I told you when I begin to talk about spiritual warfare and start talking about these things that people start coming out of the, even trying to friend me on Facebook and I look at the profile, especially if I don't know them, and I'm like, oh, psychic, this, 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 meeting you're not on. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> seriously? You can't bother me in my sleep because I have the mind of what you going to do, change my mind? No, you're not. If my eyes get more clear, more clear, my vision does, I'm like, whoa, look at there. So you know what's going to be happening if you mess with me? You're going to get delivered. Or you're going to get hurt. One or the other. I'm not talking about physical hurt. Because I'm not going to lay, lay, lay hands on anybody unless I move a normal with oil. Hallelujah. So stop allowing yourself to be beat up, to be kept in the bondage. Stop saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I even used this scripture one time. I said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And somebody said, well, you took that out of context. Well, is it true or not true? I'm just saying. <laughs> that's, that's my question. Was it true or not true? Okay, so I got to preach the whole context that it was in for it to be true and it, it doesn't fit anywhere else? Get over it. <laughs> Get under it. And lift them up. It's Christ in me. Hope of glory. And you, Deion Watson, every time you go somewhere, there's a hope of glory in you. And in you, Tabitha, you hear what I'm saying? Everywhere you go, you are there by appointment. 
because you still live and you still breathe. Therefore, there's still <laughs> an opportunity for him to use you for his glory. And he will, if you're willing. All right, I'm done. Um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Holy Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your goodness. Always, always, always. <sighs> Can't even count the blessings, but <laughs> you're awesome. You're an awesome Father. Awesome, awesome Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for always watching over us. <sighs> Ah, for sending us aid when we need aid. But this is what I pray today. And I'm going to just ask those that are listening and the sound of my voice to repeat this after me if it applies to you. Dear Holy Father, I call you Abba because you're my Father. You're not just the God of the universe. You're my Father. And I thank you, Abba, for being that. I thank you for cleansing me. I thank you for renewing my mind and giving me the mind of your son and my savior, Yahshua. Thank you, Father, that I'm not who I was. I thank you that this day right now, this very moment, is the first day of the rest of my life. And as I live and breathe and have my being, I'm going to praise your name. I declare this day from this day forward, every day, I'm going to praise you no matter what befalls me. Because you are the only and the one and only true God and Father, you created the heavens and the earth and all that is in it and every being that is known. Hallelujah. You are the only one that is you. And you have made provision for me to be one with you in Messiah Yeshua. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. I receive him. Give me ears to hear, and eyes to see, and give me a mouth to speak as you have ordained your words of truth, the sword of the Spirit, which is your word, let it proceed forth out of my mouth. Hallelujah. Not sometimes, but every day. Help me to keep my mind on you. And when the trials and the tribulations come, let me remember to think on the good things that you've done for me. And just praise your holy name, for you are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory, no matter what may come. And I pray all this in the name of the character and authority of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. For more teaching and information, visit us online today. Come and be a part of our fellowship. Here at The Seed, enjoy worshiping and learning God's word with us.